Hello Internet, I am the Hero of Julios once again with another One Piece chapter summary. This week's chapter is chapter 1089, Hostage Situation. The artwork for this week is a lovely little piece. Uh, it's a cow bringing Nami some warm milk because, you know, it helps you relax at night when you have something like that as she's working on her sea charts. Uh, the cow also happens to have a letter from Sanji that says, The stars look beautiful tonight. Would you like to go see them with me? To which Nami is replying with a note that says, No thanks, I've already seen them. So, rejected. for Sanji. But that's pretty much it for the artwork this week. I'm really looking forward to a cover story coming out because I kind of want to know, well, how do cover stories even work anymore? I mean, the most recent one we had was a cover story that coincided with the main story, or at least to an extent, like the end of the cover story was almost simultaneous with what's actually going on. So I don't even know where we go from here. Would the next one just be, oh, the next cover story could be the aftermath of Law, like his fight with Blackbeard and see what his crew is up to now that they have to rebuild. Yeah, that's probably what'll be next. Well, anyways, let's get into the actual chapter itself, which starts off in Windmill Village. The whole town has been in an uproar talking about Garp. Apparently the newspapers have already come out that the rescue of Captain Kobe was completely successful, save for Garp going MIA. Uh, even to the point where Mayor Whoopslap is, uh, he's, you know, talking about it. He hears someone laughing and he goes, well, who the heck is laughing about that? And it's, it's Makino's little baby who, uh, immediately starts crying because he's getting yelled at. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. If I knew you were who was laughing, I wouldn't have said anything. And she's like, it's okay. It's okay. He was laughing because apparently the baby has learned to recognize Luffy's picture in the newspaper. So the baby already cares deeply for Luffy, as do all of us. And it's a good thing you care deeply for Luffy because we finally get to see him again, but we'll get to that later. While this conversation is going on, however, the whole island begins to shake. But not just that whole island. All the islands in the East Blue, the West Blue, the South Blue, the North Blue, Cross the Grand Line, cross the New World, everywhere is shaking from Wano to Reverse Mountain. Because it is the aftershock of what happened in Lelusia Kingdom six days ago. A weapon so powerful that sea levels actually rose and a number of islands lost their beaches because the impact that erased Lelusia Kingdom shockwaved throughout the entire world. In fact, it has been confirmed by eyewitnesses reporting back to the Gorosei that not only has Lelusia Kingdom been completely erased, there is a giant hole in the world where it used to be and a perpetual waterfall falling down into it. Does that sound familiar? Cause it should. Any slobby. I wouldn't I wouldn't be shocked if there was a giant hole where the cloud should go at this point. That maybe this will also be a spot of perpetual daylight. Unless this is a failed recreation of whatever caused the Ennis Lobby area. There's one big theory going around that Ennis Lobby was created when the original user of Luffy's Devil Fruit pierced the heavens and caused eternal sunshine as the sun god in a specific spot for the rest of forever. The world government, trying to save face, decided to take over that spot and turn it into their judicial island. If that theory is true, then this means that the Mother Flame, the weapon that destroyed Lelusia Kingdom, is a recreation of the Sun God Nika's abilities, but without the ability to make Eternal Day. We don't know. We, we saw this location in the daytime, so we don't know if this is something at night, if it, if it stays daytime, if this is even a similar event, if Ennis Lobby is just a weird geological hiccup, or if it was the result of a giant weapon as well. But after that huge earthquake, we cut back to Egghead Island. That's right, after so many chapters, I mean, we have like, I think a solid 10 or 11 chapters of no Straw Hat crew. Enough that I was actually talking to a friend of mine, um, and if the chapters had lined up correctly, 
we would have ended um we would have ended a book right before the break of Straw Hat Crew and then the book would have ended and one of those like volumes you can buy would be a completely Straw Hat Crewless book. Fortunately, we do not have to go an entire book without the Straw Hat Crew as the first chapter of one of the volumes coming out in Japan will be the last chapter we see the crew before all the shenanigans. So there will be no book in which Luffy does not appear at least once. But going back to the actual chapter we're in, the Egghead Island is surrounded by more military, more power, more firearms than even a buster call would manage. Rather than the five vice admirals in charge, there are nine here, plus Kizaru, plus Saturn, who, by the way, Saturn has told them to make it clear to not make it obvious to the people at Egghead that he is here. Whether that's because he wants his secrecy so he can talk to Vegapunk one-on-one, -on -one, or if he's just worried that Straw Hat Luffy is an actual criminal who will try to kidnap him, whatever his reason, he wants it to be a secret that, a secret to the people of Egghead that he is here. As they are encroaching upon Egghead Island, uh, the giant sea beasts that have been mechanically enhanced, they're attacking the different ships, Kizaru even destroys one with a zap of his laser, and Sentamaru calls him. The two of them have a conversation. He says, hey, Uncle Kizaru, you know, don't damage the sea beasts. You know, you can't, you can't come on to Egghead. You know, Grandpa Vegapunk said you can't. And Kizaru's like, hey, buddy, you know, I kind of have to do this. And he goes, listen, the pacifist is here. Their, their lasers are based on your devil fruit. Don't you see any irony in the fact that it's you who Vegapunk based such amazing technology on, and you're the one coming here to do him in. We even get a little panel of Vegapunk, Sentamaru, and Kizaru, all much younger, mind you, in Wonderlust as they see uh, Kizaru's laser ability turning, you know, light sparkles in the sky. It's really cute. You see young Sentamaru clapping at it. And sadly, these are times lost as Kizaru tells him, hey, when you research the Void Century, there's very little an Admiral can do to help you. I am just a cog in the machine right now. Which, in my opinion, uh, we said Ki we see the we said Aokiji is the one of lazy justice. I, pff, come on, come on, that's just lazy. That's saying, oh, oh, my my hands are tied. You know, how how about some uncertain justice here rather than just oh well, you know, the boss said I have to do it, so I certainly have to do it. Really helpful, Kizaru. You're, you're a real good guy. You're a great. You're stand-up guy. I love you in the card game. Everybody loves you in the card game, but that's... This is raw. This is rough. So as their back and forth is going on, Doberman, one of the vice admirals, is giving a briefing to Saturn and by proxy the readers, because it has been almost three months since we've seen the Straw Hat crew, um, exactly what has happened on Egghead. He describes where everybody is, locations, who's what, what different sections of the buildings there are in. And the fact that Sentamaru is defending the base of the island heavily implies that Vegapunk and his satellites are all up in the top part with Luffy and crew, and implies that Rob Lucci somehow, some way, failed in his mission. He also states that it has been one day since the Straw Hat crew arrived on Egghead, so there's a point of time frame for you. And then finally, Jewelry Bonnie is also been spotted on said island. And this is where things get interesting. What interests me about that is that Saturn says, oh, that's Kuma's daughter. We don't need her anymore. She's just a girl. Just, you know, just ignore her. Just ignore her. Everyone there is a traitor, a pirate, uh, whatever the world government needs to get rid of. Why is Bonnie so nonchalant now? If, especially if you think about it, that when she was, you know, originally got away from the world government, Sakazuki himself, the magma man, said he felt a cold chill down his spine when she got away. So... What was so important about Bonnie then that is no longer important now? Is it just because she was a bargaining chip against Kuma? Or is there something more here that they no longer need? But that's that's pretty much all we hear about this. Uh, before York 
calls. The beautiful, wonderful, and positively evil York, which is still, still breaks my heart. But she calls the five elders, and she tells them that, you know, hey, what's the big deal? You know, hey, what's, what are you guys doing? I, I distinctly recall saying that I was turning in Vegapunk for his research. Why are you guys attacking me too? To which they respond, hey, well, you are Vegapunk, so you, you know what he knows, which means all the research he's done, even if we erase him and the five satellites that know of his power and what he has researched and what he can do, if you're still alive, then the Void Century has still been researched. Honestly is kind of what I saw coming. They're, they have no intention of meeting any of her demands. They just want to kill all the Vegapunks, so... I don't know what her plan is. She's as smart as every other Vegapunk that has been established. Why would you think any differently was going to happen to you as opposed to the rest of them? But she does manage to cut a deal with the Gorosei, convincing them that she can create the Mother Flame. Because they, they said, you know, can you make another one? And she went, oh, oh, now I have your attention. Well, yes, yes, I can. I'm very glad I sent you the first one. This kind of implies that the Mother Flame is a one-time use item that has to be built, used, destroyed in the impact of its own power, and then built once more. Which is good news, because without a Vegapunk, maybe Eam can't do it again. Which is good, because it literally created an earthquake around the world. And erased an island. To put it in perspective, the islands in One Piece seem to range from anywhere between the size of Ohio and Texas. So, it's, it's, I, I would say Luluzi is probably somewhere in the middle of that, maybe on the lower end of the spectrum. But the blast still erased it and left an infillable hole in the world. So with that, York says, yes, I can build you another one on a few conditions. Condition number one make me a celestial dragon. They say, yeah, that can be done. Liars. Two, I want to leave the island perfectly un unharmed. Fine. Also lying. Number three, please save me from Straw Hat Luffy. He and his crew have captured me. They're going to kill me. They're wiretapping this right now. They now know everything I have told you. And then we cut to the Straw Hat crew all around her. Zoro's throat, sword to her throat. Usopp's got the transponder snail holding it up so she can talk to them. And the rest of the crew is having food because the replicator has been secured. I guarantee you, if nothing else from this entire escapade, Luffy has taken the replicator and added it to the Thousand Sunny. He is going to have Frankie study that technology in particular. It is the only, only piece of robotics and technology that Luffy might even have installed on himself. A instant food replicator. Obviously, it cannot compare to Sanji, but now Sanji has access to the raw material needed to cook all the attack cuisine he's learned. This, this could be a very powerful item in the Straw Hat crew. They may never have to budget for food again, which also benefits Nami. This is the most important piece of technology that has ever been added to the Straw Hat crew. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Uh, looking at everyone here, it is plain to see that whatever fights they were in, whatever happened to the Seraphims, everything has been solved. I do have a problem that I can't see Robin in this group shot, not just because I love Robin. Anytime a single member of the Straw Hat crew is not in a group shot, it raises a red flag. You also can't see Luchi and Kaku. And we know Stussy is an ally now, so it's kind of like, uh, where are those guys? Where's where's all the characters I just mentioned? Probably next chapter, although we're on a break next week. The chapter next, we will see a flashback explaining everything that's happened over the course of the day. Luffy defeating a Seraphim, Zoro defeating a Seraphim, if the Seraphim were defeated, or if they were overridden. See... A horrible design flaw in the Seraphim that I will, to the, to the end, take to my grave this grievance in storytelling. If a Vegapunk tells the Seraphim stop, but a different Vegapunk had already given the order to go, the Seraphim does not stop. Why? That's dumb. They have the exact same rank. If you have the same rank as someone, everyone below you should have to listen to that. 
unless you are both there to directly debate why this is happening. I don't know. I, I, I just feel like once the Seraphim go to the five elders themselves, the five elders are going to be able to... One of, one of the five elders might be a traitor. Who knows? It's not like the Seraphim will obey Eam. They don't even know he exists. Anyways, I'm getting off subject. I'm always, I always get a little heated when it comes to the Seraphim flaw. What I'm more interested in, though, is how this all happened. Who, who fought what? Does the prime Vegapunk overshoot? Like, is he, like, one rank above the satellites, which is why he could go up to them and say, hey, Seraphim, stop, and then no one can stop them or no one can make them go? Whatever the reason, the crew's fine. I'm sure Robin's fine. I hope Robin's fine. I need Robin to be fine. But we're just going to have to wait until the next chapter where we finally find out what the heck happened in the last 24 hours to our beloved Straw Hat crew. And I hope you'll be there with me when it happens. Thank you for watching as always, and I will see you in the next video. This is the Hero of Julios, Xing out.